David McCallum, an actor who rose to fame as a teen heartthrob in the 1960s television classic The Man from Uncle and played the eccentric medical examiner in the hugely successful NCIS series 40 years later, has passed away. He was 90. According to a statement released by CBS, McCallum passed away naturally on Monday at New York Presbyterian Hospital while being attended by relatives. David was a talented playwright and actor who was adored by people all over the world. He lived an extraordinary life, and his legacy will endure forever thanks to his family and the innumerable hours of film and television that will never be forgotten, according to a statement from CBS. Scottish-born McCallum has been having success with roles in films like The Great Escape, The Greatest Story Ever Told, and A Night to Remember about the Titanic. However, the man from Uncle is credited with popularizing the blonde actor with the Beatles-inspired hairstyle in the middle of the 1960s. Secret agents were increasingly prevalent on both big and small screens as a result of the James Bond books and film's success. According to John Heitland's The Man from Uncle book, Ian Fleming, who created the Bond franchise, made contributions to The Man from Uncle Robert Vaughan, played Napoleon Solo in the show, which made its premiere in 1964. Napoleon Solo was a member of a covert, cutting-edge team of law enforcement officers whose initials stood for United Network Command for Law and Enforcement. Despite the Cold War, the CIA employed people from all over the world, including McCallum, who played Ilya Kuryakin, Solo's Russian sidekick. I'd never heard of the name sidekick before, McCallum said in a 1998 interview, adding that the role was initially relatively tiny. The program received mixed reviews but soon gained popularity, especially with teenage girls drawn to McCallum's attractiveness and mysterious intellectual persona. By 1965, Ilya had taken on a more significant role in Vaughan's identity, and the two actors frequently saw fans swarming them in public. The show ran until 1968. In the 1983 TV movie The Return of the Man from Uncle, Vaughan and McCallum reunited to save the world once more after being tempted out of retirement. In 2003, McCallum made a comeback on television in a different series with a team identified only by their initials, CBS's NCIS. He portrayed Dr. Donald Ducky Mallard, a pathologist with a love of books who worked for the Naval Criminal Investigative Service, an organization that investigated crimes involving the Navy or the Marines. The NCIS manager was played by Mark Harmon. Ducky, who wore spectacles and a bow tie and had an eye for attractive women, looked a little silly, but it was great fun to do, McCallum said. He also took the job seriously, spending time learning about how autopsies are performed at the Los Angeles coroner's office. The show rapidly grew in popularity and eventually made it onto the list of the top ten shows. When NCIS was in production, McCallum, who resided in New York, resided in a one-bedroom flat in Santa Monica. He was a scholar and a gentleman, always kind, a true professional, and never one to turn down a good laugh. It was a privilege to work with him right away, and he never let us down. In a statement, NCIS executive producers Stephen D. Binder and David North referred to him as a legend. Monday night's primetime, NCIS 20th Anniversary Marathon, was scheduled to have a in-memoriam card. Two Emmy nominations came from McCallum's work on Uncle, and he received a third for his performance as an instructor battling alcoholism in the 1969 drama Teacher, Teacher for the Hallmark Hall of Fame. He played the titular character in the brief science fiction series The Invisible Man in 1975, and he played Steel in the British science fiction series Sapphire and Steel from 1979 to 1982. 
He also had numerous cameo appearances over the years in TV shows, including Sex and the City and Murder, she wrote. He made his Broadway debut in The Flip Side in 1968 and in the Michael Sheen and David Suchet starring production of Amadeus in 1999. A number of off-Broadway productions featured him as well. McCallum, a lifelong American citizen who spent most of his time in the country starting in the 1960s, told the Associated Press in 2003 that he has always loved the freedom of this country and everything it stands for. I also reside here and enjoy casting my ballot here. 1933 saw the birth of David Keith McCallum in Glasgow. His mother and father, both named David, both played the cello and violin, respectively. The family relocated to London when David was three years old, when David Sr. performed with the Royal Philharmonic and London Philharmonic. The Royal Academy of Music is where young David studied the oboe. He turned to theatre after deciding he wasn't good enough and briefly attending the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. In a 2009 interview with the Los Angeles Times, he said, There weren't an awful lot of parts for me because I was a small, emaciated blonde with a caved chest. After taking a break for military service, he returned to London and started working on live television and motion pictures. In 1957, he starred alongside emerging actress Jill Ireland in the adventure film Robbery Under Arms, which was set in early Australia. That year, the couple also got hitched. McCallum was a member of The Great Escape's big cast in 1963, and he and his wife were close to Charles Bronson, who was also in the movie. Ireland and McCallum eventually got divorced in 1967 after Ireland fell in love with Bronson. 1968 saw her union with Bronson. The relationship with Catherine Carpenter, a former model, worked out fine, McCallum said, in 2009, and we've been very happily married for 42 years. I've always felt that the more I work, the luckier I become, McCallum said to a reporter in 2007, when he was working on NCIS. Although I believe in serendipitous events, I also think that the greatest way to succeed in life is to devote yourself to what you do. As word of the actor's passing Monday circulated online, many of his co-workers and admirers paid tribute to him. Lauren Holly, a star of NCIS, said, Rip David McCallum. You were the most generous man. I appreciate you for being you. McCallum made every minute count in life and on screen, NCIS's Michael Weatherly stated. The actor stated, Let's raise a jug and celebrate a funny, fantastic, authentic man. I only have three autographs, McCallum, Tony Bennett, and Sean Connery. In this image from The Great Escape, Steve McQueen can be seen exclaiming, Wow! David McCallum is here. No one performed it better. We were fortunate that he brought us Ducky. Let's shower his lovely family with all the love in the world. Let David rest in peace. Rip, David McCallum, remarked actor Michael Warburton. We will miss his warmth and wonderful sense of humour that lighted up whatever room or soundstage he came onto, as well as the brilliant anecdotes he often told from a life well lived, according to a statement from the NCIS Verse account about the late actor. People reported that McCallum's family was preparing to hold a memorial service in the future and that donations may be made in his honour to the Marine Corps Scholarship Foundation. Paul, Jason and Valentine were the three sons McCallum had from his first marriage. Peter and Sophie were the children of his second marriage. Jason overdosed and passed away. He was a true Renaissance man who transformed his passion for science and culture into knowledge. Based on his decades-long studies for his role on NCIS, for instance, he was capable of directing a symphony orchestra and, if necessary, could really do an autopsy, Peter McCallum said in a statement. Luca de Sanctis, Ian de Sanctis, Stella McCallum, Gavin McCallum, George McCallum, Alessandro de Sanctis, and Whit McCallum are his eight grandkids. He is also survived by his wife of 56 years, Catherine McCallum, sons, 
Valentine, Paul, and Peter McCallum, daughter Sophie McCallum, and eight great-grandchildren.